There are a number of ways in which the changes to the crowd effects system can be taken advantage of. And I wanted to show you another example of just how useful the behavior core can be into creating customized looks for your crowd. So I uh, have a bunch of actors here. Let's just get into our set. There we go. So they're sitting here. Uh, there's the emitter that they're, uh, they're beginning to move off of. And uh, the first thing that helps to define their speed is a piece of ground that I've got. I'll just uh, isolate that selection. It's essentially just a vertex color map that I've got. I've painted some colors into it. And the colors are going to help to trigger different changes in velocity. If we have a look at the blending tree, I'll just hide that because we don't really need to see that. If we have a look at the, uh, the blending tree in, the, in terms of the behavior, we can again see how the behavior core is at the heart of everything. So we've got our simulation branch where we're defining a velocity. Uh, again, we've got our post simulation branch that defines uh, you know, obstacles, whether it's the ground or whether it's uh, walls and obstacles. And then we have our animation state tree that helps us blend between the different animation states. In our case, we are using two animation states. We're using a move state. If I double click on that, the animation state selector node uh, helps us to define which state to use based on the logic we decide. And here we have a move state. Uh, again, we have a number of different states that we could pull from. And in fact, we'll be pulling from all of them in this example. So in this case, uh, we have a move state. And the character also has three idle states. And of course, the idle state that we use is being randomly defined here through this select case node. Um, we'll come back to this in just a moment. I wanted to show you how the vertex color map was being used in the graph. So all I'm doing here is I'm getting the ground and I'm just testing for the vertex colors by raycasting the point positions of the actors uh, to the ground, getting the vertex colors off of that, and extracting the individual RGB channels, and using the red channel, uh, the intensity of the red channel, to blend between two different speeds. So the more intense the red, the faster the characters will go. The less intense the red, the slower the characters will go. Uh, so the characters might be moving a little fast, so I'll actually take that down to maybe around 50 plus or minus, let's say five or so, and we'll take the slow state down even further. So like a nice leisurely walk, let's say something like that. Uh, of course, if the character moves over an area where there's a bit of green contributing to, the, contributing to the vertex color map, then again, I'm just triggering a blend here between uh, these original two slow and fast states and this second state, which is, again, just a, a medium speed, okay, just to get some randomness into the crowd. Of course, we could use the vertex maps uh, in a number of different ways. So that's one of them. So you'll notice now when I play back the scene. Let me just hide my emitters here. And I'll play the scene back. So the characters start, start on their nice leisurely walk. And of course when they reach uh, more intense colored areas they're going to speed up and they slow down when they hit um, lighter colored regions of red or green. So that's the first part of this. The second thing that you'll notice is that the characters as they're walking they're also trying to reach goals. Uh, these goals are defined by these red goal nulls here. The goals can have variable sizes so that once the character reaches the vicinity of a goal, it satisfies its need to touch the goal, I guess, uh, and then moves on to the next goal. So let's uh, have a quick look at the goals. If I have a look at the goal as a attribute, um, I'm setting the distance, the size of my goal itself. And if I look at the ice tree, we can show the uh, the group index. You can't really see that right now, but uh, this would be index 0. So if I can put this into wireframe mode, that should help. There we go. So you can see this is goal 0, then the character moves to goal 1, and finally moves to goal 2. So a sequence of goals are all managed through the behavior portion of the ice tree. If we have a look at the behavior graph, um, you can see that the goal sequencer is being used as a goal for the collision avoidance. And of course, if we look a little uh, further 
or closer to the ice terminal node, to the uh, the root of the ice tree itself, we're using a condition to choose whether or not to use a velocity by speed and direction solver or a collision avoidance solver. The reason that I'm using this new velocity by speed and direction is, if I double click on it, is to tell the system when characters should stop, so when they should have no velocity. And that's a decision that's determined by the condition and uh, a few choices that are defined as is the character inside of a trigger death box, which we'll soon look at, or is the actor dead? Is it uh, triggering a flag that, that kills the actor off? Um, this actor is dead flag is of course initialized in the emit graph where we've initialized a few crowd attributes and you can see one of those attributes is is the actor dead and it's set to false so all the actors are set to alive to begin with and once something triggers the boolean to be true then that will set the appropriate death state so let's look at uh, how those death states work if I go back to the behavior tree so if our character is inside a death box, so a death box looks like uh, this guy right here. This is the trigger death box. So anytime the characters come in contact with this box, uh, they will die, and they'll choose from one of two random actions. So if they're inside of the death, bo death box or their flag is triggered as true, then we set their velocity uh, to zero. And what we're doing, you can actually see that this branch here is also being evaluated uh, on this if node. This if node is triggering uh, an animation state in the behavior core and it's choosing between a few different states depending on whether or not the actor is alive or dead. So if the actor is alive, if that's true, then what we want to do is use a select case node to choose between the two different cases I've got here. And the two different cases are death state variation one. Using the new set state flows node, we're able to define which state we wish to use based on some form of logic. So when it's true, one of the cases, case one, would be death state one. The second case is the death state two. The death, so there's death and death variation one. The set animation state parameters node works really well in conjunction with the set state flows node because it allows you to set the speed of that particular action. So here, uh, anytime I'm executing a particular state and I want to vary up its uh, speed of performance, I would couple it together with a set animation state parameters node using the same state that I'm referencing, death state variation one, death state variation one, and randomizing the speed of that death. So some characters will die slower, some characters will die faster. I'd want to die faster. I, I'd want to be one of the characters uh, with a min value of 1 to make it quick and painless, relatively. Um, but to choose between death state variation 1 and the original death state, the select case node is choosing an action ID. And that action ID, of course, is initialized in the emit portion of the graph in the initialize crowd attributes. And you can see here that we've got uh, an action ID that's been initialized and it's been initialized with a random integer between one and two. So pick between one of those two actions. Uh, while I'm here I may as well go over the idle action ID. When a character is idle I have uh, three different idle actions that I could potentially choose from. So we're initializing that value as well in our emit graph. If I go back to the behavior graph now let's look at how those idles are uh, evaluated. So we've already had a look at uh, determining whether or not the character is alive or dead. So if it's uh, dead, if the flag is saying that the character is dead, we select case one or two using the action ID. If, however, the character is alive and kicking, uh, so if it's false, then we're going to evaluate another set animation state node. So uh, what I wanted to do here is then choose, so if the character is alive, uh, and it's inside of the stop and idle box, or if it's not inside the stop and idle box, and its speed is greater than 0.1, then our character should be moving. So we're evaluating true for that, 
and using the new animation state selector nodes to choose the animation state. In our case, we want the character to be moving. If the target speed is greater than one, the character is not inside of a stop and idle box, and it's not dead. Any other situation would return an idle action. And again here, you can see that our if our condition is false, so if the character is not dead and its speed is not uh, greater than 0.1, then it should be idle. So in this case, our idle action ID that we defined selects a case 1, 2, or 3 using the animation state selector node to choose between talking on the phone, talking excitedly, or looking around with the arms folded. There's a second component to this as well. So actually, let's let's trigger some deaths here and see how this works. Uh, so I'm just going to hit play, and let's bring in this death box. And you'll see as the characters walk into it, they will trigger a death event. So just piles of bodies. And the thing that's uh, not very interesting here is the way that they're dying. Uh, we'll take a look at this in a, a future video, just in terms of a new feature, just being able to set uh, offset constraints per character in their death throws so that we get very random looking deaths. So the death box works. Let's bring that back here. We're not quite ready to uh, put them out to pasture. So the other two things that I have going on here are a couple of other nulls. I have another null that I'm using to test the distance from. Uh, and that null, if we have a look again in our behavior tree, is being evaluated a little bit further down. So if we're not, uh, we are using the goal sequencer, but we're also setting the character speed based on some logic that we've defined here. So if we're uh, inside the geometry of the character or the character is dead, return a speed of zero, so that puts us into an idle state. If not, then we should be in some sort of a move state. And I showed you earlier that the vertex color map was partially responsible for setting the speed of the character, but when we need to do uh, a few more things, we can also set a couple of conditions as well. So in my case here, I'm running a a, a test distance to object. So I'm using this test null, I'm grabbing its global position, and I'm just using a distance to object, and testing whether or not the distance is less than the size of the null. So I'm actually using the uh, the rings icon and using the size of that icon to determine the size of this uh, this trigger box. So as soon as the characters hit the periphery of this box here, they're going to start to rescale their speed. They're going to linearly interpolate their speed from their current particle velocity to zero. So here they'd be moving into an idle state. And I'm doing that by taking the uh, the size of the null as a maximum distance. And I'm taking their current distance and dividing it by the maximum distance to get a value. And I'm subtracting it to get a blend between zero and one. So zero would force us into the current particle velocity, so no change, and as, he, as the characters get closer to the center of the null, they will uh, start to slow down closer to a speed of zero. Some characters will bypass the center, but they will slow down as they move through that null. And of course this is completely um, animatable, so we can move the null around and slow characters down, and as soon as we move the box away from the characters, they will speed right back up again. And of course, if the characters aren't inside the box, we're running that uh, that branch that, of course, tests our vertex color map. So let's look at how that gets implemented here. I'll bring in that, that null. I'll hit play. So if I wanted to stop a few characters as the characters move into this box, You'll see that they will slow down completely. If we move that box over to these characters, you can see that the characters are released and they start to speed up again while these characters slow down. If their velocities are 
uh, high enough, they will pass through the box as this one character does. Uh, but you can see that oh, she just made it out and then she starts to speed up again. But the rest of them got caught inside the box. Of course, I could trap them all by increasing the size of the box. And they will be forced to obey and slow down completely and move into idle states. So it's pretty uh, pretty neat what you can start to do with uh, with ice once you get a handle on how the crowd effect system works. I'm just gonna take this null size back down to a more reasonable size. And one of the last things I'll mention here is in terms of the vertex color map. Again, with that vertex color map, we're getting the ground, testing the color on the ground. Uh, so we're raycasting the point positions, accessing the vertex colors, pulling the red or green channel out in this case. We're not really using the blue channel. I haven't painted any blue. And if we're using the red channel, then we're blending between um, a walk and uh, a run. And the intensity of the red channel is, of course, driving that transition. Uh, otherwise, if the character walks over a green spot, we're blending between uh, the walk and the run uh, at the speeds defined in this randomize around value node and a second or a third state or a third value, which defines a different velocity. The other branch that you see in here is just a start delay. If, uh, if our start delay number that we initialized in our emit graph there it is right there is greater than, in our case we're using 5, then the characters will randomly start to walk. They will actually, they will begin to walk uh, while the others that haven't hit that random start value will wait until their start value is the same as the current frame value. So that is a, kind of a, a an overview of working with the behavior tree. Um, again, there's not a, uh, a lot that you can't do with this crowd effect system. It's a, it's a very, very robust system that's really only limited by your imagination. So the behavior core and the animation blending tree uh, are all new for Softimage 2014. Let's uh, kind of see what uh, other little things we can do here. We've got another little stop an idle box and again you can see here rather than just blending the speed down quickly or over time we can literally stop the characters dead in their tracks and again as they move outside of the box they're released and they're free to walk again so very easy to create uh, different patterns of movement and you can see as the characters move into the boxes uh, a couple characters talk on their phones one character is just kind of sitting here uh, she's sort of gesturing so just choosing between a lot of a lot of different actions